Hey, today we're covering Outlaw Rogues in our Get Started series of guides. We'll be running you through how to build your character, before wrapping up with a section on how to deal damage. This video was put together using information from Waz and Acrolols, who between them won every cup in the last tournament season of Legion, and are consistently the highest rated rogues on the ladder. Once you've finished watching this guide, you'll know exactly how to prepare for PvP at max level in Battle for Azeroth. Be sure to check out this guide in article form, which will be kept up to date over at skillcap.com once Season 1 of BFA starts. Outlaw Rogues have one standard build that looks like this. You will then change a few talents based on your comp, playstyle, and traits. In your first tier, Quick Draw is the optimal choice when paired with the Azerite trait, Deadshot. The Deadshot trait should be stacked 3 times and is what allows Outlaw Rogues to deal crazy amounts of burst whenever they stun their target. Although you can never go wrong with Quick Draw, if you don't have access to Deadshot, you may want to consider using Ghostly Strike. This allows you to still deal large amounts of damage whenever you set up a kill attempt without relying on a high hitting pistol shot. In your second tier, you have two options based on your playstyle and the matchup. First we have Retractable Hook which is an excellent default choice. It's better for those of you who prefer a more mobile build, allowing you to more frequently set up kills. The only time you would definitely want to take this is whenever you're playing against a team that you expect to target you a lot. This will allow you to escape much more frequently with your grappling hook. Alternatively, acrobatic strikes can be taken if you don't intend to utilize grappling hook more than every 45 to 50 seconds. Remember that Restless Blades reduces the cooldown of some of your abilities, including grappling hook, every time you use a finisher. So, you may find that the additional 30 seconds removed from its cooldown isn't doing much for you in some matchups, and can instead benefit from more fluid gameplay by increasing your melee range. In your third tier, there's only one real good option for PvP, and that's Deeper Stratagem. Not only does it increase the strength of your finishers, resulting in more bursts during your kill windows, but it also increases the length of your stun, as you're able to use 6 combo points on your Between the Eyes. However, you may want to consider using Mark for Death in some very specific situations, such as when playing 2s as double DPS. This will allow you to increase the pace of your gameplay, quickly getting off stuns when needed. Your fourth tier includes three viable options. Starting with what should be your default choice, Elusiveness provides you with some much needed damage reduction. Just bear in mind that Faint now has a 15 second cooldown, so you have to be more careful when trying to pre-faint stuns, and may want to consider just using it when you're already low. Chi Death can be an option for newer players, but we highly recommend sticking to Elusiveness if you want to play your class to its full potential. Finally, we have Iron Stomach, an excellent choice for longer dampening matchups. Note that this talent pairs extremely well with Drink Up Mihatis, as it also increases the healing of your crafted vials. Your fifth tier comes with two options, based entirely on the comp you're playing. Prey on the Weak will be your talent of choice when playing in comps that require you to maximize your damage or increase your burst during kill windows. You should expect to mostly use this talent when playing melee cleaves or other max DPS comps. Blinding Powder is extremely powerful when playing setup based comps like RMP, Thug Cleave, and Rogue Boomkin that aim to kill a DPS with crowd control on a healer. The increased range on Blind will make it much easier to blind healers and connect onto a DPS. And the reduction in Blind's cooldown means you can force a trinket with Blind and then score a kill with the next Blind 90 seconds later before their healer's trinket is ready. Next, you really only have one good option in your 6th tier. Alacrity provides you with a very stable and consistent increase to your overall damage in the form of an additional 10% haste which you're able to maintain 100% uptime on. However, loaded dice may also be a decent choice in fast paced 2's games, much like Marked for Death. Just know that you can only benefit from this talent once every 3 minutes, making it a poor choice for any game that doesn't end in the opener. Finally, let's look at your 7th tier of talents. Killing Spree should be taken 90% of the time. It's simply a great single target offensive cooldown that you can use to burst someone down. Alternatively, Blade Rush is certainly an option that can be used to add some complexity to your gameplay. 
Not only will you get an additional gap closer that mimics a warrior's charge, but it can also be used to deal extremely heavy cleave damage to two targets as it increases your blade flurry damage to 100%. Daunting Steel can even be considered in very niche situations where you want to cleave down an entire team that intends to stack all game. However, this is not likely to come into play very often, but is worth considering. Now that we've covered your talents, let's go over which PvP talents you should be using. Starting with your PvP trinket, Gladiator's Medallion will generally be your best option. It provides you with a reliable way to get out of any important crowd control for both offensive and defensive reasons. Both Relentless and Adaptation on the other hand come with very significant drawbacks against almost every single comp with Relentless not allowing you to break any vital crowd control, and Adaptation being easily taken advantage of by deciding when you're to play without a trinket. The only exception to this is when playing as a human versus rogue mage. In this scenario, Relentless becomes a great choice as you will still have access to your human racial to break a stun in order to survive, with the added benefit of reducing the duration of the crowd control that's used on you throughout the game. You may also want to consider using Relentless in matchups where you're not worried about dying in a stun, something that will usually be common against double casters. Now, we're going to separate your PvP talents into two categories, talents you should always take and talents you should swap around. Starting with the talents you should always take, we have Controller's King and Thickest Thieves. Controller's King is an amazing talent that allows you to benefit from adrenaline rush during your kill attempts without actually having to use a global on it. Thickest Thieves allows you to increase your and a teammate's damage with tricks of the trade. It only has a 30 second cooldown, which means you're able to give your team a massive 10% damage boost on pretty much every single kill attempt. Because you'll be taking Controller's King and Thickest Thieves in every game, you're left with one choice that you can swap around depending on what sort of utility you prefer. For more offensive utility, you can take either Smoke Bomb or Plunder Armor. And for more defensive utility, you can take either Dismantle or Drink Up Mihartis. Starting with one of your offensive options, Smoke Bomb can be devastating for your opponents if used correctly. It can be used to both extend a crowd control chain on a healer, or to simply force defenses without even getting CC on the healer in the first place. If you prefer a more direct approach to increasing your kill potential, Plunder Armor can be used as an additional offensive cooldown when setting up a kill. Bear in mind that Plunder Armor isn't as good as it used to be. It's only a 10% health reduction, and it's on the GCD, but while it may not be as good as it used to be, it's certainly worth experimenting with. Next, let's look at your defensive options. In matchups where you're often required to peel a melee, this mantle can be taken to help your team survive. It can be used to counter enemy offensive cooldowns, or just to prevent damage from going out while your healer is CC'd. Finally, we have Drink of Mihartis, a talent we mentioned earlier that has great synergy with Iron Stomach. And in case you didn't know, you're actually able to trade these vials to your teammates, allowing your entire team to benefit from this talent. As this would most commonly be paired with Iron Stomach, you're likely to only pick it against those long damp matchups like LSD. Now let's discuss your best trades. Even though it was nerfed, Deadshot is still an excellent choice for increasing your burst and should definitely be one of the sets you chase to triple stack. As we showed you earlier, this trait has excellent synergy with Quick Draw and contributes a decent amount of damage during your burst windows. If you're unable to get your hands on some Deadshot gear, Ace Up Your Sleeves is a great alternative for PvP. You should also consider looking to get Thunderous Blast and Dagger in the Back traits, in case you feel your damage from Deadshot is too underwhelming. Outlaw Rogues can potentially build their stats out in two different ways. The most consistent way to increase your overall damage is to follow the PvE stat priority, which is Haste, Versatility, Crit, and then Mastery. In this build, you'll enchant your rings with Haste and your weapon with Haste plus either Versatility for consistent damage, or Mastery for slightly more burst, depending on your preference. However, if you prefer a more experimental approach that could potentially yield better results when setting up kills, you can opt for Mastery, Versatility, Haste, and then Crit. You would then enchant Mastery on Rings and Mastery plus Versatility on your weapon. Bear in mind that this build will significantly reduce your overall damage and may end up being more of a gimmick build for trying to score quick kills. Before we move on to our damage section, let's wrap up this one by discussing your optimal races. When playing as Alliance, both Human and Dark Iron Dwarf are great options and come with their own strengths. Humans are obviously the better defensive race, giving you more options for survival against some comps. 
whereas Dark Iron Dwarfs provide an additional offensive cooldown via a damage increase. When playing Horde, your only optimal race is Orc, as it provides you with both an additional offensive cooldown and increased survival in the form of stun duration reduction. The final part of this guide will look at how to deal damage, how to burst, and how to open. Let's start by taking a look at what your general goals are for dealing damage. First, you will want to build combo points with Sinister Strike and Pistol Shot with a proc. You can also use Pistol Shot if you're not in melee range of your target. You then want to maintain Roll the Bones. Each time you use Roll the Bones, you can get either 1, 2, or 5 buffs out of a pool of 6. When playing the Deadshot build, Ruthless Precision is the best buff you can have for bursting. Outside of that, Broadside and Grand Melee provide you with the most damage. Buried Treasure and Skull and Crossbones both provide the worst damage increase. Finally, True Bearing allows you to reduce the cooldown on several of your abilities, including Between the Eyes and Adrenaline Rush, both of which increase your damage. Once you've got your Roll the Bones buff up, you'll spend combo points on Between the Eyes and Dispatch. If you want to cleave, all you need to do is use Blade Flurry when targets are stacked, but be careful it will break CC. Next, let's detail how you can burst your target. First, you'll want to get a good roll with at least one damage buff. Note that this may not always be possible, especially if you want to burst in the opener, or you just can't spend time waiting for a good buff. Ideally, you'll have Ruthless Precision with the Deadshot build, otherwise both Broadside and Grand Melee work too. Start by making sure you have a Pistol Shot proc. Again, much like having an optimal Roll the Bones buff, this may not always be possible, but it's the most ideal way to burst. Then get 6 combo points, and then use Tricks of the Trade and stun your target with Between the Eyes. Use your Pistol Shot proc if you have it, then use Killing Spree, followed by Sinister Strike and Dispatch Spam. Now, let's finish by discussing two of the different ways you can open. Ideally, you will always open on the target you do not intend to kill. This will allow you to save your stun DR on your main kill target and either give you time to use Roll the Bones, or allow you to set up a kill straight away with Between the Eyes. If you want to burst straight away, begin by using Cheap Shot and then Sinister Strike or Pistol Shot from range to get to 6 combo points. You can then stun your kill target with a full Between the Eyes stun, and either deal damage with Sinister Strike and Dispatch, or commit Killing Spree. Alternatively, you can start with a Cheap Shot on an off target and get your Roll the Bones buff up before making your first swap with a full between the eyes. Just bear in mind that this opener takes longer and may not always be ideal when playing RMD or RMP. Alright everyone, that's it for this video on getting started as an Outlaw Rogue in patch 8.0. Thanks for watching, and good luck in BFA.